This is Xion Song from KAIST. In this talk, I'm going to introduce our work towards collateral surface via non-monotonic learning rate scheduling. The main contribution of this work is conceptual rather than practical. So practical version of this work will be introduced in our future works. So I hope this presentation will provoke some interesting thoughts and imaginations for everyone. It is known that a neuron has peak-shaped plasticity curve, which is, called, which is called critical period or sensitive period. For example, in a group of neurons of a child, uh, the ability to learn languages gradually increases and is peaked at a certain point, then gradually decreases. We adopted this biologically plausible learning curve to dim neural networks and investigated its properties step by step. Current state-of-the-art deep learning methods such as residual network still uses this kind of monotonic, very simple step decaying learning rates because of overfitting. There, is, there exists a lot of work on learning rates for faster convergence, but the purpose of this work is to propose learning rate scheduling that generalizes better. Learning rates of graded descent controls the behavior of learning, controls the behavior of learning on low surfaces. Then what is the desired behavior of learning on low surfaces to achieve, generali uh, to achieve general generalization? We claim that discovering flatter loss surface is very important to achieve generalization. At first, the concept of flat minima is described intuitively in view of minimum description length. They claim that the fewer number of bits are required to describe flatter minima compared to sharp minima. Therefore, flatter minima has lower complexity and general generalizes better. Recently, this flat, flat minima is revisited and many works are proposing their own version of flat minima. For example, flatness is measured over a box and they perturb loss with a box constraint space. Or the flatness is measured over uniball or the flatness is measured using local entropy. We propose another more generalized version of flatness using the concept of robustness. A learning al algorithm is called epsilon robust if its perturbation with respect to input is bounded by epsilon. Robustness with respect to input perturbation is a classical viewpoint of generalization. And we can get this generalization bound by adopting epsilon robustness. From now on, for notation simplicity, we use this simplified notations for the robustness in deep neural networks. Uh, here, we show that input perturbations can be equivalently transferred to weight perturbations in deep neural networks. We first show this relation in single neural network and then we'll generalize, generalize this relationship to deep neural networks. If the input perturbation is given like this, there exists equivalent corresponding weight perturbations to make the same output of the neural network. If we choose solution like this, then if input perturbation is given, then there exist weight perturbations like this. Therefore, an input perturbation has always corresponding weight perturbation that makes same epsilon robust. Furthermore, we can calculate this nice perturbation bounds. Uh, left term is relative magnitude of perturbation, and this is relative magnitude of weight perturbations by calculating norm, norm 
Provenance norm over this solution. This relation can be generalized to deep neural networks. However, in, in this talk, uh, to, for notation simplicity, we will constrain the discussion to for two layers. By simplifying these two delta terms to zero, because they are very small small terms, we can we get this nice formulation, and then we uh, our goal is to find delta w two for all delta w x and delta w one. If we assume this very reasonable constraint, which is a uh, higher layer has larger number of dots, a uh, smaller number of dots, or equal to compared to uh, lower layers. Then uh, rank of this matrix is constrained by L1, and delta 2 always exists, which means we can always find equivalent weight perturbations with respect to um, input perturbations. Mm. By setting this norm to delta, we can get perturbation bounds for two layers as follows. Now the maximum singular value is calculated on the multiplication of whole layers. Our, interpre our interpretation of flat minima is more generalized compared to other definitions. For example, we can get many infinitely equi many, many equivalent outputs of neural networks by multiplying alpha to first layer of a neural network and multiplying alpha to second layer of the, the other neural networks. This transform is called alpha transform. And with this condition, there exist many different uniform flatness with measuring the flatness uh, with the same result. Therefore, in this setting, measuring the um, flatness on the uniform becomes useless because there, there are so many different flatness on the same output. However, our perturbation-based analysis works fine with this kind of alpha transform because we have multiplications of whole layers of weights in our formula. Therefore, our, our, our definition works fine with this kind of transformations. Finally, we can interpret general, generalization on the low surfaces. We already know, know that robustness to input perturbations makes better generalization. Therefore, we can transfer input perturbations to weight perturbations, and now robustness to weight perturbations also makes better generalization. Therefore, if the train loss is the same, flatter loss has better generalization capability. Uh, now we introduce the relation of learning rates and generalization. Let us assume the loss is quadratic form like this. Then gradient descent can be easily ca calculated as follows, and then we can represent this gradient descent process as a series form multiplied by this term. This series converges to zero and reaches global minimum if this term is smaller than one. Therefore, we can get the mm, convergence criteria, like this, this is mm, maximum value of this Hessian, Hessian matrix. This means that if the curvature of quadrat quadratic losses is high, then learning rate should be small to converge. If we rethink this condition, learning rate gives upper bound of curvature, curvature of losses. Therefore, if the learning is converging, large learning rate makes learning to discover flatter losses. Large learning rate makes this term small and Converter also gets small. 
Now we give intuitive explanation of the learning rates and generalization. The core idea is that large learning rates makes escaping from sharp minima and fluctuates until it finds the wider valley. Therefore, if we can find the upper bound of the learning rate, which makes learning not to diverge, then we can find the smoothest region of the losses, which is robust to weight perturbations. And therefore, robust, and therefore, you no, know, if the loss is robust to weight perturbations, then it's also to input perturbations. Furthermore, in our robustness, small scale local flatness is not important because they do not make much contribution to the result of the al algorithm. This kind of small perturbations does not contribute to the output. For example, the best perturbation is from train data to test data. And these ideal perturbations usually makes a great changes to losses and outputs like this. Very large scale changes is important. Therefore, under our viewpoint, robustness to large scale perturbations is important. And this small scale local flatness can be ignored because they do not contribute to output. In full batch gradient descent, learning rate is only affected by the cur curvature of the low surfaces. However, in the stochastic gradient descent, stochastic variance is further induced because of the mini batch selection. This inherent variance of gradients caused by mini batch selection interferes with convergence, and learning rate should be set smaller to prevent divergence. This stochastic variance is known to large when gradient are, are large. And the large gradient occurs near the initial learning pace. This is because the initial point is random, so its losses is also at random scale, very large scale. Therefore, lower bound of maximum gradient occurs near the initial rates. Finally, we implemented the peak-shaped learning rate scheduling using Gaussian and Laplacian function. As, expe exp as explained earlier, stochastic variance is large near the initial learning stage. Therefore, learning rate should be small until stochastic variance is reduced. Once the uh, stochastic variance, re variance is reduced, then learning rate can have its maximum value only under effect by the curvature of, loss, curvature of losses. Stochastic variance is no more important. Therefore, peak-shaped learning scheduling is beneficial to have maximum learning rates, and therefore generalizes better. Shape of each functions can be calculated like this. And we adopted uh, further offset parameters to cut off uh, extremely small redundant learning rates at the initial curve of the function. Uh, we give experimental re results with various learning rate scheduling. And upper lines are results with small four-layer four CNNs, and lower lines are results with larger 10-layer components. Red curve is validation error, blue curve is train error, and black dotted lines are learning rates. As you can see, as you can see, the discrepancy between validation error and train error are closing at peak learning rates. This is the one of the uh, experimental evidence that large learning is beneficial to generalization. We investigated our learning rate scheduling with variance image classification data sets and architectures. We confirmed that our learning rate is beneficial to test performances like this. We also have uh, many other interesting analysis and experiments not introduced in this talk. So if you are interested, please come to the poster sessions. The most important setting 
of experiment is uh, peak, peak running rate should have uh, very large values compared to um, baseline methods. Because uh, the core idea of our method is to have very large maximum learning rate. And maximum learning rate is helpful to find flatter low surfaces. Uh, we are going to introduce our adaptive per parameter version of this work soon. So we hope everyone to enjoy our future works too. Uh, thank you for listening.